In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can live off-grid, free of utility bills in a bus conversion, RV, or camper van. And yes, you can run air conditioning, and you can do it all with just solar power and a little bit of diesel fuel. Let's get right into it. Welcome back to Mobile Dwellings. If you're new here, we are a family who turned a big school bus into a tiny house. We make videos about building, living in, and touring, homes you can take with you on the road. Hit that subscribe button if that's something you wanna see more of in your feed. Let's get started. Now it all starts with a plan, and this coffee stained chicken scratch is what I came up with when I was wiring this bus conversion back in 2018. Now the first step is to pick all of your appliances. They need to be efficient and they need to run off of electricity, either 110 volts AC or 12 volts DC. Fortunately, there are only four big items that you will need to account for, and those are the air conditioner, the water heater, the refrigerator, and the cooking appliances. In our bus, we chose to use a 22 sear 15,000 BTU mini split heat pump in the back of the bus over the bed for air conditioner. We chose a six gallon electric water heater that uses 1800 watts, but it heats up water in just 20 minutes and keeps it hot for a long time. We chose a small apartment size 7.3 cubic foot AC refrigerator that uses 60 watts while it's running intermittently. And we used an induction cooktop, which uses 1800 watts on its absolute highest level, but it heats things up very quickly therefore saving you electricity in the long run. Now in traditional RV construction, all of those appliances that I've just described, except for the air conditioner, are all run off of propane. Propane cooking, propane water heating, and even propane refrigerators. The reason that I believe that that is traditionally done is the price of entry for running all those appliances off of propane is extremely low. And that allows RV manufacturers to make more profit while selling their products for cheaper. They don't install robust off-grid electrical systems. But in 2021, with efficient solar panels and and lithium battery banks, I think that's a thing of the past. Now those are your main electrical draws, conditioning the air, keeping your food cold, making your food hot, and making your water hot. If you have things that are particular to you that are gonna consume a lot of electricity, for example, if you're a gamer and you run computers and TVs all day, you might need to add a little bit of extra for that. Or if you run a CPAP machine to sleep all night, you're gonna have to account for it now. But all of your small draws, your lighting, your outlets, you can pretty much forget about those because we are going to be building a robust off-grid battery bank. It's going to accommodate all the little draws. Now, once you have all of your appliances, and you know how much energy they consume, you're going to estimate how long they're gonna run for each day to get a baseline watt hour number that you're gonna build your battery bank and size your solar system off of. But if you just wanna cheat and copy me, we use about 7,000 watt hours a day while running air conditioning for several hours a day or 4,000 watt hours when we don't need any AC at all. Now the traditional method for figuring out how much solar power to put on your roof is to take that energy consumption guide that you created and build a system that's going to accomplish accommodate your needs. Now, in my opinion, that's sort of a convoluted way of doing this. I think you should just put as many and as big solar panels on your roof that you can afford from the get-go, cover that thing in solar panels. And in 2021, there's only two panels that I would consider. There is the residential monocrystalline rigid panels that are about 40 inches wide by 60 inches long. Those are made to be put on residential roofs and they typically are about 350 to 400 watts. That's what I would put on top of a van or a smaller vehicle. But if you have an eight foot wide vehicle, like like a big RV or a bus, and you have the space for it like you do in a bus conversion, I would actually buy the commercial version of that panel, which is 40 inches wide by 80 inches long. Those are typically around 400 watts, but can go up to as much as 470 watts. I would cover as much of the roof as I possibly can while accounting for ventilation cutouts, a little deck maybe. Let's say you're gonna use 75% at least of your rooftop space for solar power. Even if you end up with 350 watt panels, if you take 75% of the roof of a 40 foot school bus, you can fit 30 feet of panels on your roof with 350 panels, that's 3,150 watts. That's a ton of solar power. If you're going to be using 75% of the roof area of a 30 foot vehicle, you can still fit 2,100 watts. And if you're gonna be using 75% of the rooftop available for a 20 foot vehicle, you can still fit four of those panels, which would be 1,400 watts. That's plenty to power everything that you're gonna need. Now that we've established that you can put a bunch of solar panels on your roof, we need to find a place to store it. And in 2021, in my opinion, a lithium battery bank is the only way to go. Lead acid is obsolete for our purposes. It's too heavy, it takes up too much space, and it's too inefficient. Now let's first talk about the easiest way to build a lithium battery bank. What we did is we took six 105 amp hour, 12 volt lithium ion batteries made by Lion Energy. It's called the Lion UT1300. And we wired them in series and parallel to make a 24 volt battery bank. If you'd like to see my in-depth review of that battery, you can click here. 
or right here. And you can also find it in the link below for a $150 discount at all times. So in our bus, we have an 8,000 watt hour battery bank and we have 2,430 watts on the roof. And that allows us to live comfortably as long as we are traveling out of extremely hot or cold areas when they are getting extremely hot or cold. Now, small schoolies and vans can get away with having less batteries because they have less interior space to condition. They probably have less inhabitants and they're probably gonna use less electricity. So for me, as I'm thinking about building out a mobile dwelling, I'm probably going to be installing two batteries for a vehicle dwelling or a really small van, four to six batteries for a larger van or schoolie, six to eight batteries for a large schoolie, and 10 to 12 batteries for a 40 foot school bus that you wanna run two air conditioners in. And you're gonna have to max out the solar panels on the roof. Now, of course, the major drawback to all of this is that you are likely going to have to make a large monetary upfront investment in your system. And that can be really hard to take when you've already spent a bunch of money building out your rig. But in the long run, it's going to pay off. You won't have to replace obsolete lead acid batteries. You don't have to be plugged in everywhere that you go. You don't have to run a noisy generator. You don't have to run out of propane and go fill up and buy more. You don't have to pay utility bills. You don't have to do anything to maintain these components besides cleaning them. And you're going to get probably decades of service out of them. They really are built to last. You'll be living off of completely renewable energy powered by the sun that you don't have to pay for monthly. And that is an incredible experience and feeling. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Boat Solar. But first, I'd love to chat with our friends, Kels and Jay. We met them while traveling in this bus this summer, and they also live in a really cool school bus conversion. They have even more experience living off-grid than we do, but they have a lot less solar power. I really want to see if they agree with this idea about building an all-electric schoolie. Jamie, what's up, buddy? So I have this idea, basically. It's the all-electric schoolie. You build with a bunch of solar panel and a bunch of batteries like we did, and you go, no propane. You go no wood, you just go some diesel for extra heat, but you go big on the solar. What do you think about that? I remember that one of the first times we linked up with your guys on the road, and yeah, we came to visit you at your campground, and like, you weren't plugged in, you had like all your appliances on, and I was like, how, how's this guy doing it? How's he like, how has he not got like anxiety through the roof right now? And he's like, you told me, you said, yeah, you never plug in at campgrounds. But if we were to start again, we would definitely invest a chunk more money into our solar system period we would get way more panels on the roof because we have the real estate for it we just didn't add the panels i guess just naivety like we, we we were completely new to it we didn't know how many how many watts we would need to to run the things that we run and also our battery bank we started off with um agm batteries they did us well for probably like eight months and then as soon as we switched over to lithium batteries it was like night and day i want to know what the impact solar power has had on your life and how your view of solar has changed now that you live off grid pretty much exclusively powered by the sun we absolutely love it i mean i don't think we could do this lifestyle without a solar setup like there's no way we, we won't be able to go to cool places for weeks at a time and just hang out in the middle of the desert we'd have to be going from campground to campground plugging in it allows us to go completely off the grid and then i think that's when we really experience like the organic side of this lifestyle um the more adventurous side of this lifestyle is when you're with a bunch of friends just in the middle of nowhere you've got wi-fi you're, you're running all your appliances and and you're getting the power from the, the sun and that enables you to just stay out there for longer and and live your life. Yeah, you feel free and you feel like hooked up by the sun for free. Yep, it, you're just generating your own power and it's, it's, it's limitless, it's endless. All right, well, I really appreciate you chatting with us. We'll see you guys on the road someday. We'll catch up soon. See you later. All right, bye. Bye. Boat Solar have teamed up with us here at Mobile Dwellings just for the sake of spreading the word about solar power. They run initiatives in several states protecting our rights to solar power and fighting back against utility companies and lobbyists who try and limit that for their own profit. They have been doing great work since 2002 and they need my help and your help to keep doing so. So if you would please go down to the link below, learn about their cause and sign up to be a solar advocate. We can make solar power more accessible and more affordable for more people. Thank you about solar for being a major supporter of our channel. Back to the show. Of course, there is one thing that I haven't brought up yet and that is heat. If you're gonna be in very cold climates, you cannot expect to heat your bus with electricity. You're gonna to have to add some kind of fuel to your conversion 
to do significant heating. Now for us, we simply travel with the weather. We are going to be in nice climates at all times. That's our goal. That's why we're in Florida right now in the winter and we'll be up north somewhere in the summer. We still need supplemental heat, so we have a diesel heater. And so we use diesel fuel to drive the bus and to give us some heat. We could probably use a second diesel heater for our 40 foot bus and we'll install one at some point. So you should plan to have either diesel, propane, or wood to heat your bus if you're gonna need significant heating throughout the year. If you'd like to get more help with building your schoolie, check out my website, schoolbustinyhouse.com. Drop a like on this video if you got some value from it. Cop a t-shirt if you wanna support us and we will see you next time. Peace.